to uh, uh, the hands-on lab, the artifact management with Jay Fogarty the factory. Uh, welcome. Uh, I will uh, uh, start by uh, saying general and uh, logistics. So I hope uh, all of you onboarded with our free tier. It's uh, like Katrin said, you, you don't need to configure and, and, and start. Uh, I saw in the chat some questions about creating repositories. Uh, you just uh, need to uh, register, put your basic information, uh, then it uh, basically loads between five to seven minutes and you'll receive an email with uh, uh, the URL and login information. And uh, that's it. This is the place where you can uh, basically stop and uh, uh, listen and uh, be with me during the hands-on lab. Uh, this will be one hour and a half session. Uh, I, I want to cover many uh, topics and I have a lot for, uh, planned for, uh, for today. Uh, if you have any questions, we have Batel and Oren, which are available for your technical questions on the Q&A. Ask any question you like. And uh, of course, if we do not cover uh, some of the questions, uh, we will answer everything offline after the session anyways. So no worries, everything will be answered. Okay. So I'll start by uh, introducing myself. So my name is Tal, uh, uh, I joined JFrog uh, this year actually as a solution engineer in the DevOps acceleration team. On my uh, job as a solution engineer, I assist customers in the DevOps journey with JFrog. Uh, I basically uh, started my career working in a, a fintech company, uh, which actually migrated to, to JFrog, where I first was first introduced to JFrog solutions. Uh, I assisted on migrating uh, a legacy CI project to, uh, from Nexus, from Sonatype Nexus to Artifactory, where I uh, uh, fell in love with the solution and I really, really had fun. And so, uh, so I decided to come to JFrog. And, uh, and I was actually very curious uh, about the first, uh, the liquid software company, about JFrog's vision, and my curiosity brought me to this, uh, to this place. Uh, I live in Tel Aviv. Um, actually uh, studied in Ben Gurion in, uh, in the Negev in Israel, uh, computer science, and now I'm working on my MSc. So today's agenda, uh, we're gonna discuss about binary management, what it is, what Artifactory uh, is and uh, its advantages. We're talking about the way of integrating your CI, your build to Artifactory. Uh, we're going to cover uh, metadata on Artifactory and uh, all our automation tools that are available. We will discuss security and permissions in Artifactory. And we'll provide a, a, a full uh, overview about the whole JFrog platform. JFrog basically offers a, a DevOps end-to-end -end platform. Uh, but this uh, uh, basically hands-on lab is covering Artifactory. Uh, but we'll uh, basically see the whole platform on our hands lab. Uh, at the end, we'll do some recap summary and don't forget your t-shirts. Okay, so binary and repository management. So uh, from code to release, so if I'm looking at the basic uh, flow, eventually you have a developer who's writing the code. He can declare new dependencies. Uh, uh, with that dependencies, which are uh, mainly can uh, be brought from the, from the internet, if it's a Docker app, if that developer is building a Docker image, uh, if he uh, writes, a project in Java, then maybe he's using Maven, maybe he's using Gradle. In, in some way, he's building the project. Uh, maybe he wants to run a unit testing or integration tests, or uh, he, he can scan the, the, the code for, uh, with a static code analysis tool, or he can scan for vulnerabilities. Uh, but basically, he builds a binary, an, an artifact or a package. And uh, this binary later on is being uh, deployed to the production environment or distributed to the production environment, where later on this comes to the customer, to the end user customer, who then enjoys the new version of the developer. So I don't see here a binary management, right? So wh where is the binary management solution comes uh, to play in this playground? Uh, so basically we need uh, to understand how, how is it, how is it uh, actually functioning at the moment and what happens with JFOG Artifactory. So when you have multiple developers, multiple customers who are going to the internet to bring the dependencies they need to build the project, they are going to public remote repositories uh, I mentioned, okay? So it's Docker Hub, JCentral, NPM.js for NPM packages, 
etc. But what happens if they are not available? Okay, and what happens if you do not have access to the internet? internet? What happens if you have a LAN uh, network and you want to keep it inside the organization? So who eventually is managing these binaries? Okay, when, when you speak about uh, managing the binaries, you need to have a binary management, which is exactly artifactual. And you can see in this diagram that the developers and the customers looking to patch dependencies are no longer going to the public remote repositories. They are going to artifactory which basically brings these dependencies for them from the internet, but not only brings the dependencies, but also cache them inside of the factory. So eventually, if these public remote repositories are down, you have a factory to serve and answer anything that you need to build the project. Okay, imagine a scenario where you need to build a project, but mmaven is down, npmjs is down, docker hub is down. You can't build your project, you cannot release your version, and basically, uh, the, the customer impact can be uh, can cause damage to the business. So, Artifactory is universal binary repository manager. Okay, it's one place, one single source of truth in the organization to go to to store all binaries and their dependencies. You use Artifactory to proxy to save inside Artifactory using remote repositories all the binaries that you need to build the project. And not only the developers are using Artifactory, but also the CI manager will work against it. And we will see that during the demo. So why use Artifactory? Because it integrates with more than 27 package managers, okay? And also CI servers. And when I say 27, more than 27 package managers, it means that every, imagine every technology that you want to bring to the organization, you will have support in that in Artifactory. If you are using Helm charts, Docker, Maven, Gradle, Debian or Python, you will be able to uh, proxy and uh, manage these binaries inside Artifactory, but also CI tools, okay? You're using Jenkins to build your CI processes, you have TeamCD, uh, you use GitHub Actions, uh, uh, name the CI server, we will provide an integration and I'll elaborate on that more on the, on during the, the hands-on lab. With Artifactory, you will be able to uh, have a system of record. It means you will have full metadata for all binaries in Artifactory. You will have the name, version, description, uh, created date, updated date, etc. Artifactory is a checksum-based storage. It means that for every binary that is deployed to Artifactory, a checksum is calculated. And if you try to deploy uh, the same binary uh, twice or third, three times or more, it will only be saved once in the physical storage, okay? So the, the, the binaries are basically uh, kept in an optimized way. So you can, uh, if you are storing a uh, Artifactory or installing Artifactory in the cloud, you know that the storage is optimized. You won't pay uh, money on, 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 on storage that is kept more than once. Automation, so a good DevOps solution needs to have a great automation tools and Artifactory uh, has a, fully documented and supported REST API. Everything you can do with the UI, you can do with the REST API. We have a command line interface called the JFrog CLI, which will uh, be able to uh, have a user-friendly communication with Artifactory. We will see that on our hands-on as well. Uh, Artifactory query language is uh, 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 basically allowing you to query uh, your relevant binaries in a very specific way. So you will receive only the binary that, that is needed, maybe for the QA team, maybe for the uh, production team responsible to bring the binaries to the production environment. And we also have a, a tool named Artifactory User Plugins, which are allowing users to insert their own logic into the Artifactory server side for their specific uh, use case. Integrations, so in JFOG we have uh, uh, dedicated teams who are responsible on, on uh, 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 JFrog being too integrated to fail, okay? So we have many tools and I will cover uh, one tool in this uh, hands-on lab uh, for automating and, and, and uh, integrating your CI and CD to the JFrog platform. So let's look at this DevOps flow and understand where exactly is Artifactory uh, standing in this, uh, in this diagram. So first we have the developer, okay? And let's say the developer is declaring new dependencies, is working on a new project, Maybe he's writing in a Go application and he just uh, declares uh, uh, the, the relevant uh, packages that he wants to use, okay? Uh, first thing he does, he, he builds the project, right? And to build the project, he wants to resolve the, the relevant dependencies. 
He will resolve that dependencies when he, while he's working on his laptop for multifactory. So uh, Artifactory will then bring, uh, using uh, Go, the relevant binaries, will save them into Artifactory and bring them for the developer to build his own uh, Go project locally. Uh, after the developer, uh, the developer is done, and basically, uh, and by the way, Artifactory is also approaching uh, using remote repositories that are configured there before that to bring the relevant binaries to Artifactory and then to the developer back. If the developer is done, he is ready to commit the changes into the version control system, right? So once it is deployed to the version control system, you have the CI server who are basically uh, uh, triggering a new build. But we said this build is also connected to Artifactory. So the CI server is basically also resolving the same dependencies from Artifactory. After the project was built, you deploy the modules to Artifactory with the relevant information from the build. And later on, while they are saved to Artifactory, you can have uh, contribute any metadata that might be relevant to these binaries, okay? Maybe the QA team uh, ran some uh, manual test. Maybe there are integration tests that are running and uh, basically uh, anything that uh, can provide more information about these binaries, if whether or not they are ready to, uh, to go to the production environment, this step is where you can contribute metadata to the binaries in Artifactory. After this, and while the binary is ready, you can basically, uh, if needed, uh, bring it closer to the production environment using distribution. And when it is close to the production environment, you can implement your CD and basically bring it to the production servers where the customers are basically in, in experiencing the new version, the new solution, and, and, that, and that's it. this is the DevOps flow. So you can understand that Artifactory as we see it is one single source of truth. It is the mission critical heart here in this platform. And uh, it is the uh, binary management that uh, holds the binaries and manages this solution uh, from with the DevOps flow. So when we say Artifactory is storing the binaries, where are they stored exactly? So binaries are stored in repositories and we uh, are speaking about three different repository types. First one is the basic one, the local repositories, which are used to physically store the binaries uh, that, that are built uh, on, on, on the CI, on the developer side, okay? So for example, I have a Docker image, I build a new Docker image, I need to store this Docker image somewhere, I will probably store it in the local repository. I have a Maven project, I built a, a, a new application, it is running as a jar, I will store this jar on a local repository. So this, this is a local repository. Uh, remote repositories, we uh, talked about them on, on before, they are used to proxy uh, and, and basically they are served as some uh, lazy cache for uh, uh, bringing you the relevant dependencies from the outside world. So for example, uh, we talked about building a Docker image, and in, in terms of uh, a Docker, a remote repository might be pointing to a Docker app, okay? So when you build your Docker image, uh, uh, you will uh, communicate with a remote repository that will serve as a lazy cache, okay? It checks if it has the, uh, the binaries in, uh, already stored in Artifactory, and if they are not there, it will bring them for you, okay? So it's lazy. Uh, it only brings them when they are needed. A virtual repository is something that we consider as best practice because it basically allows you to aggregate multiple repositories under one URL, okay? When you build a project, you need two endpoints. You need one endpoint to bring the relevant dependencies and second endpoint to store the binaries, okay? But you do not want to communicate with two different endpoints. It's much easier to communicate with one endpoint. This is why we have virtual repositories. And I will show that on the hands-on lab as well. Uh, before we continue to the hands-on, I will just mention, and I think on the free tier, when you uh, uh, basically, and I will show that, basically when you log in, you are able to choose uh, which repositories do you want to be created uh, in the platform. And uh, while you do that, you will see some naming conventions, and this is the naming convention that we recommend to use uh, for, build, for repositories. Uh, first, there, there is the, the, the name of the team that is responsible to, to deploy to this binary, to this repository, the name of the technology, which can be Maven, Docker, Helm, etc. The maturity level of the binaries, uh, which can be production, QA, uh, etc. And if this is uh, locally or remotely, uh, 
as uh, this is the locator. Okay, demo time. So let's jump into our environment and uh, I'm, I'm clicking here. So this is the whole JFrog platform, which uh, basically on the left side, you can see all JFrog products. I will cover the whole uh, platform in an overview on the end of the, uh, this uh, session. But uh, in general, I want you to, uh, and I'm sure uh, you, when you onboarded on the free tier, you probably seen this uh, screen that uh, basically uh, on, on the first attempt of, of logging into Artifactory, you can create the repositories automatically by choosing the technology that is relevant for you. So uh, here you can see, uh, for example, that some, some uh, um, uh, technologies are already uh, have repositories that I created. But if, for example, I'm choosing the uh, Cocoa Pods and Conda, and I click on Create, and I recommend you to do that uh, as well if you are on the free tier right now, so you will have a few repositories to play with. Uh, you will see that these default repositories were created for me, and I can basically start uh, clicking Finish. I will see them under the Artifactory tab here, and I will be able to start and, uh, and, and use these repositories and uh, deploy to them eventually. Okay, so uh, please, if you are on the uh, factory right now, click on the set, quick setup and uh, make sure these repositories are created and uh, so we can uh, basically uh, go and, and deploy and you can understand the examples with me. Uh, for the hands-on, uh, I really recommend to choose Maven because I will pick a Maven example. So uh, please choose Maven and uh, uh, also a generic repository. So this will be, uh, can be used during the hands-on lab, okay? So, okay, so this is Artifactory, okay? Basically, once you click on the, uh, 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 this tab, you will have three different tabs, one for packages, one for bids, and one for artifacts. The packages show us the, basically the, the different applications that are deployed into Artifactory. And if, for example, I'm searching for a specific package, this Docker app, for example, this Docker app, for example, while I'm clicking on it, I'm seeing the relevant uh, versions that were deployed to Artifactory, okay? So if I'm clicking on uh, one specific version, uh, I can see uh, the package view and we discussed about metadata and this is where metadata takes place. On every Docker image, I can see the different layers, okay? And what command represents them. So uh, th this is one example. Uh, let's take uh, maybe uh, an other package just to show the difference. And maybe I will uh, uh, search for a Java example. Um, as you can see here under the packages, I can search in a smart way and I can choose which type of packages I want to look for. Uh, if I'm clicking on Maven, then I will see all the Maven uh, packages. And if I'm clicking, for example, on this AngularJS and on this specific version, um, Basically, uh, I can go and see on which repositories it was deployed. Uh, and uh, going back, this is more of a high level view that can explain you how many versions do you have for this package and how many times it was downloaded from Artifactory. I'm switching to the Artifacts view where you can basically see all repositories that are existing in Artifactory. Okay, so if I'm choosing here uh, to have no filters, I can scroll and see all the relevant repositories in Artifactory, okay? I can choose some repository uh, here, and uh, maybe let's choose this NuGet uh, package, and we can see all the metadata regarding this NuGet package. Uh, on the general, you can see the name, the repository path, where is it exactly existing in Artifactory, uh, who is the deployer, what is the size, when it was created, and also we uh, said it says checksum-based storage, so uh, you can see the relevant checksum that was cal calculated for this NuGet package. And the same way for Docker, you can see uh, that this NPM uh, package has its own tab with the NuGet package info, and you can see all the metadata here as well, okay? Um, the third tab is for the builds. And in Artifactory, we have a, a feature named build integration. Build integration uh, is something that I will elaborate on that on, on, uh, on, the, on the next slide, but eventually you will see uh, the information from the build side inside Artifactory, okay? So every CI process that you have will also exist here in case you deploy the build information and this can be super useful, okay? Also, if you are an admi administrator, you will have an administration panel. And on this administration panel, you will uh, be able to manage the Artifactory solution. 
And uh, as you can see here, if I'm going to the repositories, I am able to see the local, remote, and virtual repositories that I configured. Under the local repositories, I can basically click and see that this local repository is of type Maven, and I can play with the configurations, uh, and maybe uh, black out this repository so it wouldn't be able to uh, use it, and uh, uh, maybe we'll see remote repository, for example. Uh, if I'm, we discussed about Docker, so as you can see, this is a Docker remote repository, who is in this case pointing to Docker app, okay? So I can use this remote repository to build my Docker images, and uh, uh, this is a remote repository. Last one uh, is the virtual ones, which are aggregating multiple rep repositories under one repository key, under one URL. And if we are looking at uh, uh, this uh, Docker repository, for example, uh, you can see that all five different rep repositories, some of them are all, all for our locals, and the last one is remote, are existing in this virtual repository. So a question raises, basically, so if you have, and I'm, uh, for example, approaching and using this virtual repository, and I'm deploying my Docker image, which repository will hold this image? I have four different local repositories. So that's why we have a default deployment repository. So when you set a virtual repository, you need to choose the uh, uh, one local repository that the binary will be deployed to, okay? And uh, the way it actually works is when you have multiple repositories under one virtual repository, okay? We have what we call artifactory resolution. We have the order of resolution. And it means that it will first try to search for the binary in the local repositories, okay? Then, if they are not existing in the local repositories, it will go and search on the local cache. And if they are not existing on the local cache, only then it will go to the remote repository, trying to bring them from the outside, okay? So this is the way to basically use virtual repositories. And uh, maybe I will uh, go and show you an example and uh, Let's go back to the artifacts and I want to, to see basically the libs release, okay? So all of you, when you set up a, a, with this quick setup, when you create the repositories automatically for Maven, what you have is a, a automatically created the virtual repository named libs release, which is pointing to two repositories. One is libs release local and the other one is J Center who are connected to Maven Central to bring the dependencies that you need. So uh, communicating with this libs release uh, can be, uh, we can take as an example, this binary, okay? So this jar was deployed uh, into Artifactory. And if I'm, uh, I have this URL to, to this file, I can copy this uh, uh, URL. And once I'm, I'm going and please have a, have a try and uh, uh, you can do that when you basically click on deploy, choose some random file, okay, from your computer and uh, deploy it to Artifactory. Okay, once you deploy it to Artifactory, you basically need to click on deploy. It will later on exist on, on, the, on that repository and uh, uh, copy the URL of, the, of this specific file. Um, once you copy it, please add a question mark with trace and this will help us understand the way virtual repositories work. Because what I receive here is the trace log of how Artifactory works behind the scene. So basically, you can see that uh, 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 all the different logs and where is Artifactory basically searching for the, this binary, okay? So we can see that it was unable to found on libs release local, okay? And uh, it is searching for this binary in jcenter cache and it was unable to find it on the cache as well. Okay, like we said, it's going to the local repository, then to the cache, and if it's not in the cache, it should bring it from uh, uh, the outside world, and uh, actually, yeah, it's using this remote request URL to bring it from JCentral, and this is a great example of uh, artifact resolution in this virtual repository use case, okay? By the way, what happens if I'm uh, basically clicking on it uh, on the second time, this is already existing, and uh, uh, as you can see here, it's uh, bringing it from the local cache, and it does not need to go to JCentral one more time, okay? Great. Hi. 
Uh, this is Katrin speaking. Sorry to interrupt you. I think we need um, a little moment. Um, I think it's going very fast for people and I think we still have a few people who are trying to catch up with their sign in. So maybe we can pause for just a couple of minutes sure. so that everybody can follow accordingly. Sure, 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 Thanks. sure. sure. Uh, so if anyone has any um, questions um, or something that we can help you with uh, to catch up, uh, please let us know. We will pause for uh, four or five minutes and um, hopefully you can, you can catch up. Great. Guys, if you have any question or uh, something you want me to elaborate to, feel free to, to write on the chat and we have enough time to make everyone align to what I'm, I'm saying. Well, if you have issues creating the Maven, then it might be already existed on, on the, on the as, as a repository, okay? You might already have a Maven repository, so you will not have the ability to set it up with the quick wizard. So uh, please maybe verify that uh, this repository already exists and you can deploy to it, okay? So maybe if you could at the moment just um, place your questions here that uh, we that uh, would help you for catching up and for the rest of the technical questions around our tools, we can take it later so that we are able to to continue the training. Yeah, Catherine, can I add one more thing, please? So everyone that's having any issues with the server name or anything that's related to activation of the servers, please send me the server name too or a link for the server. Uh, okay. Thanks, Batel. Also, there was a question for a lab or a demo purpose. It is okay to set up one local repository like Maven or we need to set up one virtual repo as well. So I, I recommend to use the quick setup because then you will uh, have, if you choose Maven, you will uh, automatically have local repository, remote repository and the virtual repository. So for the demo and hands-on purposes, it's, uh, it will be easier um, to, to do it with a quick setup. And, and, and yeah, and I'm, I'm showing the example on a virtual repository. So somebody is asking about the Artifactory menu. So the quick setup is on the right uh, top um, icon where it says welcome and your name, there's the quick setup. Yeah, also there was a question about the difference between local and virtual repository. So I'm just uh, mentioning again, local repositories are used to store the binaries. Virtual repositories are just pointing in other repositories so that you will eventually have one repository to communicate with, okay? So virtual repositories are just pointers to other repositories that you will need to use. Uh, Batel uh, or Oren, uh, can somebody maybe go through the questions in the Q&A part, and not the chat, but there's also the Q&A part that uh, where a couple of questions, maybe we can answer some of them live. So that but Elle is, but Elle is on the Q&A and I'm on the chat. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. 
Yeah. So guys, eventually what I want you to, to have is, a, a, is one virtual repository named libs release, okay? Which, is, which can be created from the administration panel under repositories. You can basically, uh, if you are not succeeded with a, a quick setup, uh, you can basically create one virtual repository, okay? Named libs release. Okay, this one is pointing at two different repositories. The first one is libs release local. The second one is jcenter. Um, jcenter is a remote repository pointing to this URL. Okay, so it's only this configuration. And libs release local is just a local Maven repository. Okay. Okay, so I will go over some open uh, questions as well. Um, so what repository I must ch choose if I'm using Go? So you uh, have a Go option with the quick setup. On the quick setup, you basically have all package types that are supported. So uh, uh, yeah, so this one is the Go. And in this case, for example, I cannot uh, create it because the default repositories were already configured, okay? Okay, great. I see that many people uh, successfully created their uh, their servers. Yeah, well, there were two questions on, on the chat. So uh, first one is why using JFOG Factory. Second is uh, that if you have already the NPM uh, package, uh, why should you use uh, JFROG? So uh, I can uh, go back and, and speak about that as well. So in general, um, Altifactory is, is, is basically a binary management solution that allows you to manage the binaries and keep them under one uh, place. So you will be able to better monitor it. And in case something happens to the public remote repositories and they are not available, you will still have them cached and ready to go in Auto Factory. So you will uh, keep uh, working and building your projects and delivering the latest versions uh, for your customers. Also with Auto Factory, you have many automation tools that are, uh, will allow you to have uh, what JFrog sees as is vision 
liquid software uh, in vision where it means that all uh, DevOps flows are working like uh, and, and uh, bring in the relevant updates like liquid without any human intervention. Yeah, so if you already created a, a virtual repository and you have, uh, for example, this libs release, you can click on the deploy and manually choose to deploy a, a binary, okay, from your computer. Just, uh, you know, you can choose the, some, some binary and, and test the deployment part. Um, yeah, and it's uploaded. So, uh, Catherine, shall we uh, continue? Yeah, let's continue uh, because uh, we have a, a lot to cover. And um, if you have any, maybe you want to just, uh, if you still have not managed to uh, sign up, maybe you just want to watch the training and uh, then the uh, Artifactory instance that you signed up for is, doesn't expire. You can use it anytime you want to. And what you can do is you can just watch and learn and you can try it out afterwards. And we will also share the recording of this training. So you can always go back to the recording and watch it again, but I think we can continue now, Ty. Okay, thanks, thanks a lot. So yeah, so I just deployed some, uh, some binary to Artifactory with the UI. Um, so basically uh, I can get now all the, the metadata for this specific file and I can see the checksum that was calculated. Um, I, I also, what also we have here after uh, the, the repositories are being configured, uh, the next step is to uh, basically communicate with this virtual repository. If I'm a developer or if uh, for the CI process, uh, you eventually want to use this virtual repository uh, to uh, build your project and deploy the binaries uh, to this uh, repository. Uh, so for, for the customers to have an easier integration, we have a, a button called set me up and the set me up feature basically allows you to have the relevant configurations. So you will be able to uh, communicate and integrate to this virtual repository in a very easy way. As you can see here, we support uh, all the technologies. So uh, if it's a NuGet, then we'll uh, have the NuGet commands. So you will be able to deploy to this uh, repository. And if it's a, a Python, then in this case for PyPy, we, we provide you the commands uh, to run and to be able to communicate with Artifactory. And, uh, and yeah, and so now I'm, I'm focusing my example on, the, on, on this. And I, I want you to uh, take some uh, repository uh, in, in GitHub, which are called Calculate. It's a tiny repository to, to run some experience in, uh, for CI CD purposes. And uh, uh, basically, I want you to uh, clone this project. I'm sending the, uh, the project in the, in the chat. So uh, basically, what I'm doing right now, and uh, uh, I will clone this repository to my desktop. Uh, and uh, sorry, it was already here. So I'm going into this repository. And as you can see, uh, uh, it has a, a folder uh, named Maths. And uh, if I'm uh, sitting into this folder, uh, I can see basically that I have uh, uh, my, POM, my POM file, my Jenkins file, and uh, this is from the project itself. Uh, if I'm just building the project uh, using Maven, what happens is that uh, you can see that it's downloading the dependencies from uh, Maven Central, right? So now I'm not using Artifactory, I'm dependent on Maven Central, and the project will be built uh, from J Central. So uh, what happens if I want to try out and uh, configure this project to work with Artifactory and bring the dependencies uh, from Artifactory? So let's stop this and uh, basically check the set me up button. So I'm standing at this virtual repository and I'm clicking on set me up. Okay. And I'm sharing the link again. Okay. Here in the group. So yeah, so this is the link, just git clone this repository. Um, so when I'm clicking on set me up, 
uh, and I'm clicking on Generate Maven Settings. What you will receive here is a, a, a snippet, a settings.xml file that uh, you have all necessary configurations to communicate with this virtual repository. So all you need to do basically is to download this snippet, okay, or to copy it. And once you download it, okay, you will see that the settings XML is actually this one and you can use it to build the project. Okay, so what I did is I, I, I brought the settings file here before. And uh, uh, as you can see, uh, uh, all, all the links and the artifactory URL is here with the virtual repository name and my credentials, okay? So here I'm using my username and this is the API key. Uh, when I'm basically using this file with minus settings.xml, what I will see here that is that, just a second, when I run this command, uh, it's starting to proxy and bring these dependencies from out of factory and not from J central. Okay, so I did it very fast, very quickly. I didn't need to configure anything, just download the configuration uh, from out of factory right away. And out of factory will now store the relevant dependencies in this virtual repository. Okay. So, uh, okay, great. So if you are testing and uh, basically downloading this snippet, uh, an API key will be generated for you. But if you want to just see it in Artifactory, under your username, you can basically click on Edit Profile. And uh, uh, under the API key, uh, you can create a new one, regenerate a new one, and copy this API key so that basically all the REST API commands can be uh, used for these purposes, okay? Great, so uh, I, I'm, I, hope that, I hope that some of you, uh, yeah, so I see that there is someone who's uh, having issues with the Git, so uh, you, what you can do is basically download the, the, the code and not uh, use the, the Git clone command, okay? And uh, this is also an option. Um, okay, great. So let's move on. So we saw a way of uh, basically, uh, we, we covered the artifactory overview and uh, uh, the next phase is basically discussing metadata and automation tools, okay? So uh, artifactory can hold uh, metadata, as you can see, it has its own database, which are, uh, is used to store the relevant information about the binaries. But you can also bring your own metadata to the binaries that are stored in artifactory, okay? You can choose your own key value pairs and when I say key value pairs, this can be either the team leader and, and, and name that is responsible to bring this binary, the maturity level of this binary, and this can be assigned to any binary that you need, okay? When you use this artifactory metadata, you can uh, deploy the metadata of the binary with the UI, REST API, CLI, and more, and later on can search with this metadata. So uh, uh, yeah, so the full REST API and uh, the CLI and Artifact Query Language are all documented here. And uh, I want to uh, jump into uh, the examples and I will run this in a second. So uh, running the curl, curl command, you can uh, receive information if Artifact is available. Uh, uh, this one does not require uh, credentials, but once you start running any REST API commands, make sure you are using the username and password. The password can be the API key and uh, I will run the commands and show them in, in this way. The J4 command line infer interface is a smart client with Artifactory. It has a simple interface to our products and uh, once you install it, you can basically communicate with Artifactory very easily. Uh, it, is, uh, it has high level functionality. It implements smart logic behind the scene for you. Uh, it is aware of checksum, so it wouldn't try to deploy a binary to Artifactory if it is already stored. Uh, and you can run it in a dry run in simulation mode to understand what is the impact before you actually run it. So the syntax uh, is basically running a JFrog, the target, the product target that is uh, relevant, um, uh, the relevant command, and multiple options. Um, with the CLI, uh, you can download files, copy files, move files, and delete files. Uh, I will show an example on the Artifactory query language, um, uh, which is uh, possibly uh, helping you bringing only the relevant binaries 
that you need based on metadata, based on uh, dates, etc. And you can use that with the REST API or CLI commands. Okay, so let's go into the examples and uh, I will go on, on the command line and uh, let's start. So basically first uh, command we will run is to check basically that our artifactory server is uh, answering our request and is available, okay? So I'm copying this on the chat as well, so we will be able to uh, run it and use it. Um, next command is uh, uh, basically getting the service ID from Artifactory. So every uh, product server that is running has its own ID. So if I'm running this command, uh, I receive this ID that is relevant for this server that is running. Uh, I'm copying this one to the chat as well. Uh, Okay. So for, for, for the command to be successful, you will need to put your username and you will need to put your uh, API key and change the URL to fit your own URL that you, uh, you were provided with from the free tool. Um, what happens if you want to deploy uh, uh, binaries, okay? So with this REST API call, what basically what I'm doing is uh, I'm uh, deploying binaries to a repository named generic local. Uh, and this is the name of the file that I'm deploying. Before I'm running it, I'm just go back to my desktop where this file is existing. Um, and uh, let's see how it exactly works. Yeah, so it's running in the background and now I'm supposed to see under the generic local repository, a file name when it is for everyone. So yeah, so if I'm going back and so if I'm going back uh, and I'm scrolling into the uh, factory, generic, generic local. So for, for an easier way, I can just, choose to look only for the general repository types. And uh, once I have them, and I can see that under generic local, I have the Kubernetes for everyone file, okay? Um, next one, and you will be able to, uh, basically I will post that on the chat as well. Um, so you will be able to test it and make sure that it's actually working. Um, just a second. Great, so next command will be searching, okay? So let's look at this one, where I'm first using the AQL. So here, what I'm doing is I'm searching with the Outfactory REST API with an AQL query. So I'm sending a post request, and this is the AQL query, it's items.find, and what I'm doing here, I'm choosing to have a generic local repository, and this is supposed to bring me all binaries from this repository. So if I'm clicking here, I can see that I received the JSON response and the response contains all the binaries in, in this uh, repository. So you can imagine how convenient it can be if all the relevant binaries here are used to production or to QA. Uh, you can take this JSON further and extract the relevant information and, and use it for your own purposes. Uh, what happens if you want to uh, uh, create a user or delete a user? So let's try it with the UI and REST API. I can click on a new user and uh, maybe create some dummy user, uh, choose a dummy email address, and uh, also choose a password. And let's create this user. Uh, uh, okay, it was successfully created. Uh, and now I'm trying to delete it with the REST API. And this is a scenario where basically, for example, if you're moving uh, to a SAML SSO a provider and you want to ignore and uh, not have an internal users in Artifactory, then you can basically use this API to, uh, to uh, delete or get rid of your internal users so that the only authenticator uh, that might be relevant is your SAML SSO provider. So uh, the name of the user was uh, uh, the dummy, dummy user. Uh, so right now I'm, basically sending this uh, and it has removed successfully, which means that it should not exist here anymore. If I'm refreshing this page, let's see. Great, so under the users list, yeah, so dummy does not exist anymore, okay? 
So yeah, so we, uh, we have a fully REST API documented. So you can basically, uh, like I did, uh, choose a, a, some action that you can do with the UI. You can do it with the REST API as well. And this can be helpful while onboarding to uh, new teams and do the same operations only once with the script that you write and uh, using the REST API. And this can be very easy. Let's move to the CLI. So uh, using the CLI is basically with JPROC commands. And uh, with that, you can uh, basically uh, see that this is the version and uh, uh, what, what happens when you start using the JFOC CLI is you need to choose an artifactory instance to work with. So to do that, you need to start running the uh, commands. The commands are starting with RT, which means artifactory. And I can start by seeing what configurations do I have at the moment. So uh, right now I can see that uh, I have one server which I'm communicating with. This is the URL of the server and uh, it's under my user and the password is not uh, in here. I, I, what happens if you want to uh, create a new user and uh, configure it with your information? So in order to do that, you will need to uh, basically um, uh, first uh, clear, let's clear this configuration. So we start clean and now I have uh, and no configurations to show. So what I'm doing if I want to create a new configuration is run jfogrt c. Okay, uh, so I need to choose the artifactory server ID. Uh, let's call it uh, hands-on lab, okay. And now what I'm required is to choose the artifactory URL. So please make sure you are using this URL, okay, where the, the beginning is the, the URL of uh, your artifactory instance and it should have slash artifactory at the end. So uh, yeah, so this is the JFOG artifactory URL. This one is optional, so I'm skipping it. The access token is something that we're not using. We want the username and the API key. Uh, the username that I'm choosing is uh, tarYI and uh, the password or the API key is uh, the following. And uh, let's ignore this one and ignore this one. And we're basically ready to go. So now under a, a configuration, I can see that this server ID was configured. And the first thing I want to do is basically ping uh, this server to make sure that it's really available and uh, I can speak with it. And as, as you can see here, uh, I received okay. It means that I can uh, uh, communicate and start running any commands I want with this artifactory server, okay? So uh, uh, let's start. So basic command uh, will be searching, right? What happens if you want to search inside Artifactory and uh, find some relevant binaries? So let's use AQL for that. And we have an Artifactory search uh, uh, command using the uh, jfogrts. And uh, uh, basically in this, in this command, what you need to do is to define your file spec. The file spec is, uh, and let's copy it before we run it. Yeah, so as you can see here, the file spec is a JSON that uh, represents the AQL query. And uh, this AQL query is basically finding you all binaries from repositories that are uh, matching this uh, regular expression. So uh, let's run this command and see what we receive. And just a second. Great, so we received many results and this is basically all uh, binaries that are, uh, as you can see, matching the regex that we define. But uh, maybe you want to limit the results or add more uh, and, and look at only one result or... or uh, so this is something that can be achieved using a limit. So maybe we want to limit the results to only three results or play with the configurations. So as you can see here, it's uh, providing me only three binaries in this example. Um, other examples regarding the uh, CLI is maybe uh, showing you uh, binaries and, and I'm showing the other file spec here um, that are loaded after or created after 2017 or maybe before 2017. And uh, uh, this is, example is a great uh, point uh, uh, for uh, doing cleanups, okay? So let's say you're using the factory uh, for uh, quite a while and you have some information that might be not relevant anymore. Uh, with AQL and with the uh, JFOX CLI, 
you can retrieve and look at the binaries that are uh, maybe the, uh, not relevant and uh, delete them afterwards and uh, automate this process. So if I'm running this command, uh, I can basically uh, receive um, all binaries um, that are uh, loaded after 2017. Um, and uh, let's copy this one. And as you can see, there were 28 uh, binaries and uh, this is my result, okay? Okay, um, let's move on to the CI integration part. So, uh, yeah, so we support multiple build tools, okay? And uh, if you need to build your Maven project, your Gradle project, your Docker application, uh, and uh, and uh, you want to do it from Jenkins, from Bamboo, from Circle CI. Uh, this is something that we are supporting. Uh, we have plugins and extensions, so we will be able to uh, have a, a very easy integration. Uh, if you have a missing functionality, you can, uh, as you can see, you can use our REST API or CLI. Uh, and the, the CI server will basically download the binary the dependencies, upload the package and uh, publish the build information from the CI level and we will see the agreement with them. When you publish your build in, uh, information and we call it build integration, you are able to see in Artifactory uh, builds, uh, the artifacts that were deployed, the modules within these builds and all the dependencies that were used, okay? And we will see that during the demo, I will elaborate on that in a few seconds. Uh, so let's say you have your CI server, you created some uh, binary, some package, and it was deployed to a repository in Artifactory. We have a concept named build promotion, which means that basically you are moving the binary from different repositories based on the maturity level of the uh, binary. So if, for example, you have a binary that is deployed to integration repository, once it is deployed to integration repository, you can have quality gates to check this binary, okay? In this case, running integration tests. And only if the tests are valid and have no issues, you are promoting it from one repository to another, okay? In this case, these are all local repositories and they are representing different maturity levels for these binaries. Okay, great. So let's uh, go and see a demo. So uh, in, in, in my example, I choose to have basically uh, GitHub Actions. GitHub uh, has released a, a CI solution named GitHub Actions. And I'm posting this on the chat so you'll be able to uh, scroll. And, uh... Hi, when you are posting on the chat, please make sure that you select uh, panelists and attendees because uh, sure. otherwise not everybody can see it. Sure. So yeah, so now it is uh, all panelists and attendees. Thank you. Um, yeah, great. So we are looking at this Calculate with GitHub Actions uh, project. Uh, so uh, here in this example, I choose GitHub as the CI server, but this can be applied to either any CI server that you are using, if it's a, a Bamboo or SQL CI or other solutions. So under the Actions tab, uh, you are able to see uh, basically the, the relevant CI uh, that is running. And in this example, what I want to, to show you is uh, how I took a, a, a CI process and I integrated it with Artifactory. So uh, in order to do that, let's start from fresh, okay? I'm cloning this uh, repository here, okay? So um, I'm bringing this to my desktop, okay? Now I can CD to this repository. And uh, while I'm, uh, I'm seeing this repository, and this is actually the, the, the same as the last one with the max uh, uh, folder. Uh, what I'm doing here, I want to basically check out to a new branch. Uh, my, or, or let's say hands-on lab by Tal. And when I'm checking to a new branch, I want to uh, do some dummy commit and show you what happens, okay? So let's just push some space so that the CI will be triggered and push it uh, to dumb commit. And let's push it to, uh, to the version control. So yeah, so I need to push it with the branch name like Git is mentioning. 
and basically, um, yeah, great. It is deployed to the version control. And, uh, and now what happens is that under the actions, I will see a new uh, a job that is running. And let's follow and, and catch up what happens here. And uh, we will go over the code right after. Great, so the CI is starting to run. And what we can see here, we have two critical steps. One step is to set up the JFrog CLI, and another step is to ping the JFrog CLI. So uh, if I'm going to GitHub uh, uh, Marketplace, okay, uh, what I can see here is when, I see, when I'm searching for JFrog, uh, I'm able to see an action named Setup JFrog CLI. And this action can basically help me install the JFrog CLI uh, inside my CI process. And this is the way of integrating uh, into JFrog Artifactory in this uh, scenario. So all I need to do is just insert these two lines and I receive all functionality of the JFrog CLI and I can start building the project, deploy the project, uh, configure uh, anything that I need and deploy it uh, to Artifactory. So if I'm switching back, okay, so the setup JFrog CLI was the one used uh, here to install the CLI, okay, and, 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 and configure it with my Artifactory instance. The ping JFrog CLI step is to, uh, like we saw, to uh, make sure that where our uh, Artifactory is available and we can uh, basically access it. And after it is all set up, uh, as you can see here, the build and deploy phases are starting to resolve dependencies from Artifactory, from the repository uh, that was just created named a virtual hands-on lab by Tal. Okay, so it's downloading uh, dependencies from Artifactory and it will eventually deploy the binary into Artifactory. Um, I will go over the, uh, the code and show it um, and we'll let this process run, but eventually uh, it is a YAML-based CI process. And uh, uh, as you can see here, the two uh, critical steps were uh, setting up the JFox CLI and pinging it and uh, after that, uh, building the project uh, is, is very easy. Okay, all I need to do is CD for, for the uh, relevant uh, folder project and with the CLI, uh, build the project using Maven. Okay, so uh, this is just one example, uh, uh, but this can be done basically from every place, every process that uh, the CLI is installed there before that. And you can use that uh, to integrate with your uh, uh, CI processes of course, on some cases and on some CI processes like uh, Jenkins uh, or uh, Bamboo, we have uh, extensions, we have plugins, and, and the integration might be looking a little bit different, but this is a very uh, general approach. Uh, and maybe we will see that the process is ended and uh, what's the file in Artifactory. And so let's go back to the actions. I can see it's running successfully uh, and eventually the build and deploy phases, uh, deploy the binary into Artifactory. And if I'm scrolling down, uh, I can see that the build was successfully, and this is the URL of this binary inside Artifactory. Okay, the job was deployed successfully to my repository. The next phase is the build information, okay? And the, uh, this is a very important uh, feature because what happens if you want to have uh, the build environment information deployed into Artifactory? This step is responsible to collect all environment variables that are relevant for this build and publish that information into Artifactory. So uh, right here, you can see that I am able to browse it. And uh, uh, if I'm copying this and I'm going here, uh, what I will see is that under the build stuff that we saw earlier, and uh, sorry, I need to connect again. Now let's go back to this URL. So under here, I can see that I have a, a new build named Calculate CI Job. Okay, this is found under here, under this uh, build stuff. And I can see that these two modules were deployed just right now, okay? But not only these modules from this specific build, but also the environment variables, okay? So if I'm scrolling here, I can see uh, the Android SDK root, uh, Chrome web driver version, and some GitHub Actions parameters. 
And I can actually do a diff between different builds, okay? So if this build was success, was failing for some reason and I want to compare it to a former build, I can check a former build right here and basically uh, compare, uh, just a second, and basically compare uh, the dependencies. In this case, all the dependencies were unchanged. It means that I'm building the, the, the project with the same third party dependencies and maybe the environment variables were changed, okay? But in this scenario, I can see that nothing was changed, okay? Uh, okay, so these ones were updated, which makes sense because this is the GitHub run ID and this is the GitHub run number. Okay, great. So uh, a few more things. So this step is regarding the published build information. I'm bringing the environment variables into Artifactory and uh, 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 here I have a quality gate named X-ray scan, which is responsible to scan the binaries for vulnerabilities. It can be other quality gates as well, uh, but only if this step is successful, what I do is a, it's called build promotion, okay? I'm deciding to promote this binary, okay? It is ready to go to my release repository and uh, with one JFrog CLI command, which is JFrog Artifactory build uh, uh, promote, build promotion, I can uh, uh, choose uh, to promote this to this repository. And when I say promotion, it means that this binary, and when it says it's promoted successfully, that this binary will be available here, okay? So if this is my production repository, I know that all binaries under this repository pass the, uh, my quality gate, which is in this case, the X-ray scan. Okay, great. So this was my example. Um, I want to go over uh, to the new uh, security permissions uh, part. Uh, so yeah, so Artifactory is an enterprise ready solution and uh, we have to provide a good security model so, so that eventually when you have multiple development teams working with this solution, everything will have its own permissions and uh, they will be able to configure it correctly. So. Our permission model is consists of users groups and uh, then different permissions that are available are uh, reading uh, the binary from Artifactory, uh, annotate it with uh, uh, maybe new information, deploy it to Artifactory, delete the binary from Artifactory or also manage it yourself, okay? The relevant resources that can be managed in Artifactory are uh, for example, repositories, like we've seen virtual repositories, local repositories, remote repositories, uh, but also builds, like we've seen the last uh, build that was the Calculate CI job from GitHub Actions, and also other resources which are not going to be covered in, in this um, session. Uh, so yeah, users and groups can be managed inside Artifactory, but you can definitely bring your old, own LDAP server and integrate it to Artifactory so that users and groups will be uh, immediately brought into Artifactory. You can bring your SAM LSSO provider and uh, authenticate against this provider and not with Artifactory. You can have API keys used to uh, uh, do their API, uh, REST API calls. Uh, and you can also choose to have temporary access tokens uh, instead of API keys. The difference between API keys and access tokens is that API keys related to a user and access token is a more uh, generic way of communicating with Artifactory. You can choose to refresh it, you can choose to and delete it and uh, etc. Um, and of course the passwords can be uh, encrypted and are saved the secure way in the database. So let's go over into Artifactory and uh, basically under the administration panel, uh, under the identity and access, you can see users, groups and permissions. So uh, under the users, we, we've seen how to create a user and delete a user with the REST API but you can also create groups and have groups for different teams uh, for the development team, maybe the QA team, maybe the management team. Uh, and basically you can attach permissions to uh, each group, okay? And this is a great way of uh, implementing your uh, role-based access control uh, model because eventually when you create a new permission and you name it maybe the QA team, all you need to do is add the relevant resources for the QA team in terms of which repositories are relevant, which build integrations are relevant, and later on choose the groups uh, that are uh, basically the QA team are, is, is composed from. So in this, in this scenario, when I'm choosing the resources that are relevant for my QA team, and I'm choosing the group as a QA team, 
that's it. Once the people are leaving the QA team or joining to the QA team, I need to manage this as a group and the permission stays the same. So uh, the permissions can be uh, read, annotate, manage, and uh, we've seen that uh, for every resource that is possible to um, manage in Autofactory. Uh, of course, in terms of security, you can bring your LDAP server, like I mentioned, and this can be configured under LDAP here. And uh, in this example, you can see that the LDAP server is with this URL and uh, you can match with uh, a user pattern and all the relevant uh, configurations for the LDAP. As well as uh, some LSSO, if you have another provider, you need to bring all the relevant configuration, the login URL, the logout URL, and, and etc. Okay, great. Um, Yeah, so yeah, I covered this ones and we're back to the J4 platform. So uh, we discussed mainly about Artifactory, but the J4 as a whole provides an end-to-end -end DevOps solution, okay? So the solution is enabling binary management with Artifactory, DevSecOps with X-Ray, distribution capabilities, uh, CI-CD, uh, and, and, and basically Artifactory is the mission critical heart of this solution. Okay, when you deploy and, and push relevant changes to the version control, you can build the project and, and deploy the binaries into Artifactory. Artifactory will store the binaries and manage them for you. X-Ray is providing security and, and compliance uh, under uh, to, uh, and is sitting next to the Artifactory server. It means that uh, you can have artifact, artifact security and container security and know about the relevant vulnerabilities inside Artifactory and also reveal the relevant licenses that are available inside your software. What happens if you uh, deploy the binaries and you want to take them closer to your production environment? For that, we have distribution, which allows you to uh, package your uh, uh, relevant binaries, relevant ready uh, to production binaries, closer to your uh, production servers, and with that, prevent network latency and network bandwidth. This can be done using uh, JFrog Edge Nodes, which are Artifactory read-only servers that can be set closer to the uh, way you want to the place that you want to distribute your binaries to. Uh, pipelines is JFrog CI CD solution, and you can write and orchestrate all your CI and CD processes inside the JFrog platform. So, uh, which pipelines you can integrate very quickly to Artifactory and, uh, and, and also uh, deploy and to the relevant production environment and, and basically orchestrate that. It's a YAML based solution and, and you can basically uh, uh, use it on the cloud and on prem. Mission control is the last product where you basically can monitor and have an overview of the whole solution. Uh, so you will know uh, what happens if uh, one server is down or, or one server is not reachable anymore and uh, you want to uh, be able to monitor and, and, and uh, configure the whole solution. That's why we have our dashboard for that. And uh, this is mission control in this solution. So the topics we cover today is basically the concept of having a binary management and why it is important and what Artifactory has to offer in this field. We saw a CI integration with GitHub Actions with the JFrog CLI. We covered the metadata and we saw the, uh, how exactly the metadata is, is uh, viewed in Artifactory. And we uh, experienced the REST API, the CLI uh, as an automation tools. We, as we understand uh, how to uh, use Artifactory in, a, in, in basically a, a secured way and define and manage the relevant permissions for the relevant teams. We covered the whole JFrog platform and all the JFrog products in general. And, uh, and, and that's it. And so, yeah, so this is the exciting part actually, where you need to scan, to QR scan this, and you can get a free t-shirt from us. And so I want to mention, I think the advantage of, of using the free tier uh, instance in this uh, session is that it's available for you uh, also after this session. And uh, you can basically play around with Artifactory and, and with the relevant information that we'll send you afterwards and experience it. So uh, it can stay uh, much longer. And uh, yeah, thanks uh, for listening. And uh, I had a lot of fun. 
I, I'm very glad that we had so many participants. Catherine, anything you'd like to add? Yeah, I would also like to thank you. Um, uh, we apologize if uh, for some people it was a big bit uh, fast, um, but our slogan is release fast or die. So <laughs> I guess that's our thing. Uh, thank you so much, Tal, for uh, the training. I hope that everybody enjoyed it. We will share the recording, uh, so don't worry. You can uh, go through the training again. Also, the Artifactory instance that you signed up for is uh, unlimited in time. So uh, you can use it, and of course, not only for training users, but you can actually use it in your uh, development environment and uh, enjoy it. And uh, yeah, please go to the link uh, and uh, fill out the form with your t-shirt size and your address. And we will send you a t-shirt. If you have any questions, um, please reach out to us. Um, if you are interested in our products for uh, commercial use, uh, please uh, connect with us as well. There's a contact form on our uh, webpage. What we are doing is we are setting up sessions with our technical expert. We are looking into your uh, needs and into uh, pain points that you maybe have and we uh, can, can help you to make your developer life much easier and your DevOps engineer life, of course. So um, Karen, do you want to uh, say a few closing words? Is there anything that um, we can provide or that you need at this point from us? So somebody is asking again about the free lab. So um, the in Artifactory instance you signed up for is a real free tier version of Artifactory and pipelines and X-ray. So this is not just for training purposes, but for your real life. Yes, and we also have the JFrog Academy, where you can uh, uh, look for free of charge trainings. So just go to our jfrog.com website and uh, look for the Academy in the menu and you can also uh, enjoy training there. We are also running uh, many webinars a month. So this is also something where you can uh, learn a lot of uh, good things. Uh, some of the webinars are very tech hands-on and some of them are more about DevOps processes. So please make sure that you, if you are interested in more info, uh, that you check out our webinars as well. And of course we have a huge knowledge base on our JFrog page that you can consult, a lot of set me up features and, and good stuff that will help you. Okay, Karen, I need to unmute you just a sec. Um, <laughs> sorry. Can you, can you unmute yourself now? Try it, please. Hey, ah, I think I'm it here. Works now. <laughs> can you hear me now? Yes. Great. So uh, thank you very much, Tal, and the whole team for this um, amazing workshop. Some people, yes, yeah, said that it was a little bit too fast, but you know what? It's a recording. You will have a recording afterwards. And if you watch, if you will be watching the stream, it will be also recorded as of now. I mean, you can go now and watch it right now. And YouTube has this cool feature. You can make it slower, you know, playing out. So yeah, maybe you can use it. But you know, the important thing is that we got a lot of content in this short time. It's a lot of stuff to go and follow. So yeah, feel free to uh, do it on your own pace. That's amazing. Thank you, Tal and everyone again. Uh, and yeah, I just want also to thank uh, all attendees for attending this uh, event. I hope we will do a lot of, of more stuff with, together with JFrog. I know you have a great, very impressive portfolio of uh, tools, uh, DevOps tools, and uh, we would be really happy to explore those tools with, together with you. Yeah, that would be fantastic. If uh, somebody is interested in further sessions, uh... Um, after Tal has recovered from this one, I'm sure that <laughs> we, can, we can involve him for further trainings or somebody else from the team.
Uh, Oren and Patel, uh, anything from your side? Just to thank you all for your valuable questions and uh, the engagement. So I think Patel is uh, in, a, in a call now parallel to, uh, to this session. So, or yeah. she's still uh, answering the questions. <laughs> 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 all right. So, yeah, again, a big thank you to, to you all. Uh, please uh, fill out the form and claim your T-shirt. You earned it. And I hope to see you again in, uh, in another training session or in one of our webinars.